CBS Kids. UTEP up by six, leading by as many as 13. Memphis has never led. But UTEP has been unable to put Memphis away. That was that back door for and Randy Culpepper, and they missed it. Cole. Tiana number three. Wow. One after another. He's got three threes and 24 points. And has been terrific in every way. Stone. Polk on his side. Here we go. Incoming. Jackson with a slash. Well, it's been all Polk fiction in this game right here doing a little dancing knocking down the long three and in transition here has the numbers huge dagger here for christian paul 27 points on 11 of 12 shooting and you could see him with that great jump shot jump stop there before he goes into the shot that's exactly what julian stone was telling us yesterday when he gets his feet set whether it's in the half court or in transition he is deadly and we've seen that today all the struggles of Julian Stone, though. Stone has played great overall game. And the shooting of Randy Culpepper, who struggled from the field, looks a little tired. It's been Christian Polk offensively carrying this Miners team. And Stone has six assists in the game, but he's only attempted one shot. He's got nine rebounds. It's yeah. not in his nature. He's a point guard. Through and through, he's trying to get everyone else involved as the smallest man on the floor for the Miners. And foul, the shoulders just sag a little bit. Williams, Britton, and Black. Jackson snaps it outside, Carmouche for three, picked up by Stone. And a Memphis foul on Jackson. That shot by Carmouche, that's exactly what we showed before the game started. He can make that shot, it just, just didn't be, you know, just didn't get it to go down. He's now 0 for 5, is Carmouche today overall, 0 for 3 from being on the arc. Oak has only missed two shots today. Nice defense by Memphis, they come the other way. And coming for two on the basket by Bill Burton. Who is the leading scorer for this Memphis Tiger team? There was a foul from behind, and as you saw, Stone number three. There is no quit in this young Tiger team right here. The throw ahead to Will Barton. Now, this is the time when you use the glass. This is when you need a little fancy points, and Barton right there doing a good job of using his body, getting the foul for N1. Yeah. I thought he had to make a play like that, Reggie, right. because, because he was really off balance. He had to get himself back on balance, catching the ball. That was a great play. Memphis at the free throw line began three of nine. Since that time, nine of nine for the strike. And now we're back to that six-point game where we were before Polk hit those two threes that got the crowd going. So once again, Memphis, they take a shot right in the chin, but they get up and they come, they come right back at you. They've only had a few staggering eight counts, but they've been able to answer the bell here. Another steal. Barton again with Crawford to the side. He can't finish. Vacuumed in by Bart, picked up by Black, the ball was kicked. Yeah, I, I, it's, again, Memphis getting an opportunity and not converting. But despite despite their troubles there, Reggie, they are right in this game. I mean, knock, they hit a three now. Knock, knock, They are knocking on the door here. Jackson, Crawford the screen, pick and pop, a three, good! Memphis has come to within three. A nine-nothing run. Now you're going to see things shift because the pressure now is on really the home team here in Utah. This senior-led team, we're going to see what they're really made of the game for the winner to go on to the dance here. When's the last time Culpepper was taking a shot? You're thinking there, Jackson got in the way. Oh, Will Barton with a little shove. Is he going to give him a, a technical? It looked like he was trying to give... What's Randy Culpepper, a little, as we call it, dap. Well, 
here's the extracurricular activity after the, the foul had already been called. And then Culpepper was going up for the shot. But that's really odd. It looked like Culpepper was the guy at fault there. Barton was trying to shake his hand. Randy, if you're Randy Culpepper, you've got to sell it. I like it. <laughs> sell it. Moments ago. But keep in mind, we have a foul before this play occurred. Culpepper was fouled. The ball's dead. And now Culpepper and Barton, they get entangled. The referees go over and look at that. They review the monitor to see if there was a flagrant foul or a fight. And what they decided was that it's an unsporting technical foul on Culpepper. It's an unsporting technical foul on Barton. But remember, that occurred after the initial foul. So Culpepper, who was fouled in the first place, he'll go to the line and shoot one and one. And then we just pick up where we left off. Big miss there. What a long night for Randy Culpepper at the offensive end. Three for 12 from the field. 0 for 1 now from Milan. And you got to be careful on defense here because now that we've had that double technical foul call, the officials are going to watch a little bit more closely for the contact. Flap. Wheeling into Williams. Jackson. Shot clock at six. Switch on defense. Deflected out of bounds, off the minor, shot clock at three. We've only had two times. Williams, the rebound. The shot, Will Barton. Now you're wondering who's going to be the go-to player. Only down three for the Memphis Tigers. The leading scorer on this team is Will Barton, who just missed that three. This is the closest it has been since 27-25, back in the first half. Collins has been real quiet. Usually he's one of those do-everything type players. Doesn't really look for his offense at all. Stone. Triple. That is Gabriel McCulley. And the lead is five. What a great job by Stone to draw everybody. Oh, what a oh. play by Jackson. And he got fouled. A chance for a three-point play. How quick is this kid? Well, you were talking about McCulley, and all he does here is follow his point guard. He draws all the defense, and McCulley steps to the open spot. And then here's the answer, Joe Jackson. How quick is this? Goes the line. He can cut this to two. Did you see the change of pace there by Jackson? Almost like he lulled in the sleep, and he was waiting for the screen to come over. Turned on the jet to get it to the paint. Jackson had 24 yesterday, 18 in the first half. And Jackson today has put in 13 points. It hasn't been a spectacular 13, Kevin, because he's only made one three. And now Jackson's job is to chase Culpepper around. One of the youngest teams in college basketball, Memphis, on a 12-2 run in this championship game against the most experienced team in college basketball with eight seniors, Utah. Like Chris Crawford on Christian Paul Polk. Getting it done offensively, you have your best defender and Crawford on him. Stone, foul. Great free throw, too. 57%. With a chance to go to the, to the dance. That was ugly, though. You just saw his mom, Janet Stone. Three-point game for the tie. Crawford, kaboom! Memphis has come back to tie it for the third time today. And that his is fifth three-point hit. And he's got a little smile on his face, and you can understand why. And now all the pressure's on UTEP. So I was talking to him before the game, and I was asking him, well, who was the best guard to come out of Sheffield High School? Randy Culpepper or Chris Crawford? McCulley on the drive and found 127 to play. This is a deep three in transition. This is something we've been talking about. Well, look look where he is here. Yeah. Where's, where's the defense? The closest guy is right here. I guess his man is hung up over here. But there's nobody there. And by the time they get there, a guy who's already made four out of five threes, you've got to guard him a little more closely than that. Each team has made seven. This is by Culpepper Stone. And McCauley. UTEP has never won the conference championship in Conference USA. Memphis is going for their fifth title in the last six years. 
as the screws are tightened and timeout taken. UTEP on top by one. We're getting ready for another great finish on CBS. For UTEP, one player in double figures. Chris Pope at 27 points. Memphis has four in double figures, including Crawford's 15. Memphis has never left. Jackson and Colton. Black with the screen. Black held foul. Williams will draw the foul for Texas El Paso. A minute left as a freshman against Black down in this on the other end. I agree with you 100%. Oh my. Two huge misses. Now, but Memphis, they haven't been discouraged all game. They have no, come right no. back and keep fighting, and they need a defensive stop right here. You want to play good defense without fouling. Well, you want to know the difference between a young team and a veteran team. Right here, Julian Stone, the leader of this team, taking some air out of the ball right here. With too much air now. Look how high it is. Big rebound by Kermuch. That was not very well done. Jackson. Barton. They're just going. No timeout. And they've got one. They've got now, a timeout. now they got to call timeout. They've got a timeout. They take it right there. Right. And you have Julian Stone, 6'7", on the smaller Jackson. Jackson. Knocked away by Stone. Foul on UTEP. Up number four. And the reason why Coach Floyd went with Julian Stone, he wanted that size. If you're Julian Stone, you got to back off of Joe Jackson. Give him space. It was that chest right when he went up for the shot, that chest bump that created that foul. Remember, he shot an air ball earlier. He's just tied the game. Freshman Joe Jackson from Memphis. Now, and keep in mind that UTEP still has two timeouts and there's plenty of time left. Two big ones. Is that the first time they've been ahead of the day? Yes, it is. There it Unbelievable. Is. Bell Pepper babbled. 2.5 out of bounds. UTEP's ball. Stone to inbound. This is one with an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. Kevin, this is actually a situation where Memphis did a great job defensively. Polk does not handle this ball cleanly, and then he's got three guys on him. That was very good defensive play by the Memphis Tigers. I don't know that that's exactly the shot they were trying to get. Reggie, it looked to me like he could have gone to the basket. Well, they were trying to get him the basketball at the top of the key. But Memphis did a great job of taking that away. So he kind of back cut to the right. And you're right, he didn't catch the ball cleanly. But how about the defense and not giving up for this young Memphis Tigers team? Memphis led for only 7.8 seconds the entire game. Heartbreak for the Miners. Elation for Memphis. Going to the big dance for Reggie Miller and Dan Bonner. Kevin Harlan saying so long from El Paso, Texas. Coming up next, it's game one of the Big Ten semifinals from Indianapolis. Michigan against number one Ohio State. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.